was kind of a normal July day. I was out in the camping area when I heard the first gunshot. I'm a survivor of uh, the 22nd of July attacks in Norway. Breivik was in police uniform. He walked down along a building and people ran towards him. It was a pile of bodies. Uh, it's something no one should ever have to see. But in that pile was a mobile phone and, and it was ringing. Someone who lost his child is, is trying to get in touch with it. and No one's ever gonna, gonna pick up that phone. I jumped in the water and, and the children followed me. And, and while doing that, I saw Breivik aim at me and fire. I realized at that moment that I'm, I'm gonna die now. Uh, this is my last moment. It felt surreal. It felt like my soul leaving my body. Breivik was a result of, of not having people listen to him. A lot of extremists build their ideology around very real grievances. We need to meet these grievances with alternative solutions rather than just write them off. We have to engage with people as people, to see individuals and to listen to their stories. From early teens, I was uh, fairly disappointed on society and, and school and, and a lot of other different things. And when I got engaged with the One Power Movement, it gave me a sense of not just being good enough, but being uh, superior. And that was really a key message that appealed to me. In this environment, you promote a lot of violence and hatred, and, and that makes you do stuff that you perhaps wouldn't have done otherwise. I think a lot of the people that, that were around me at that time really didn't know what to say or how to respond uh, to this engagement. Uh, it's a very strict ideology and you have very strict rules on what's permitted and not. And to look at my comrades and think about this made me rethink, is this really what I want to do with my life? I got in contact with Exit and found somebody who could understand and, and not judge my previous engagement and, and that really helped me in taking the, uh, the step to leave.